Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm sorry this took so long. Um, realistically, I have been putting off doing this for way too long. Honestly, I feel like the lighting's a little messed up. We'll see if this makes it any better. Honestly, I feel like this isn't doing much for me, but we'll, we'll keep it. So, here's the thing. Um, my name is Erin. Um, most of you probably know me as Lola Scott from Camp Rock. Um, but the reality of the situation is I am nothing like Lola. Um, she has two parents who are happy and together, and my parents are currently going through a divorce. Um, she is, you know, a very successful, talented dancer and all-around performer. And, uh, the tea guys, a girl can't dance. Um... I'm really flattered that you guys all enjoyed my dance scene at Camp Rock as much as you did, but not my skill set. Um, I would be lying to you if I said that, like, dancing was my passion and, like, I was gonna just spend the rest of my life turning into the next Beyonce for y'all, because I'm not gonna do that. But um, I, I do really love performing, and uh, the reason that I stopped performing is probably something that a lot of you guys are wondering about. Um, so I figured that like, as part of my first introduction video, I would kind of explain it all. I don't know if a lot of you have been paying attention to what has been going on in the news um, for the past few years as far as um, the development in research for head injuries. But um, when I was 17 years old, um, I was a passenger in two different car accidents that were about um, three months apart. Um, my mom was in both the car accidents with me. And um, my mom had always been really ill when I was very young as a result of car accidents um, that she was in right before I was born and right after I was born. So my concern at the time was only her health and her well-being and not so much my own. So any symptoms that I did have, I kind of just dismissed as being, you know, the trials and tribulations of growing older, being a teenager, you know, the stresses that are associated with that. And I never really, sorry, I never really took the time to figure out what exactly was going on with me and if this was normal or not. And it wasn't until I was 20 or 21 years old. Um, I had already been living in my house in Toronto since I was 18 when I got it. Um, and I was completely independent, but I had been having terrible stomach pains and migraines that didn't make any sense. And I was suffering with a whole bunch of ailments that despite my going to the doctor and having tests run to see if I maybe had celiac disease like my mom, or if I had developed Crohn's disease, or if I developed a myriad of other issues, um, everything came back as perfectly fine. But they were only testing for a physical ailment. They were not testing for anything psychological. So when I was 21, um, I was just in my house uh, studying for, I think, a final project in university. Um, and as a reward for myself, I decided to order myself a burger and fries. Um, Uber Eats was new, so, you know, that shows you how old I am. Um, anyways, um, I ordered myself some food, and uh, at the time I had a little chihuahua, his name was Bronx, and uh, he was at home with me just chilling, keeping my company while I was doing my work, and he normally heard when someone was coming to the door, because I have this really squeaky gate in front of my house, I live in like a hundred and... 39, I guess 140 year old now house in downtown Toronto. Um, so the gate squeaks like a motherfucker. And uh, my dog used to always hear it and he would like lose his shit and go run into the door because he wanted to be a really good guard dog, even though he was only this big. Um, so needless to say, I, uh, listened to my dog and I got up and I felt a little lightheaded but I didn't think anything of it kept walking and the the exit from my bedroom to the stairs is actually really not that far of a distance um and then there's a flight of stairs down before you get to my front entrance way so I ended up blacking out at the top of those stairs and falling 14 feet and landing on my chin um okay so if I have a picture, um, I will I will insert it into the video, maybe here, maybe somewhere. Thing I don't know, um, but I will show you uh, approximately how far away the bottom of my stairs is from the brick foundational wall that's actually like at the bottom of my stairs. Um, so basically, like if you were if you were coming down the stairs, um, there would be like 
a small gap um, before you would actually run into a wall at the bottom of my stairs. And if I had fallen any further down the stairs, uh, chances are I would have broken my neck and either been paralyzed or died. So very lucky to be here. Um, very thankful to be here, but definitely um, was not was not all together after falling 14 feet and just messing myself up like that. Um, so it took some time. It definitely took some time. Okay. Um, I broke six of my teeth um, and I sustained a third grade concussion. Um, I ended up not being able to eat solid food for several weeks after that because of how swollen my jaw was and because I hadn't had my teeth repaired properly um, and I didn't have an appetite because of the concussion. Um, and it was during that time that I found out that I actually had been suffering with post-concussion syndrome um, for most likely the several years leading up to that from the time that I was 17. And when we started noticing all of these issues had cropped up in my medical history. So, needless to say, um, one of the unfortunate side effects of having post-concussion syndrome, and especially if you do not know that you're suffering from concussions, is you kind of lose yourself. And when I say you lose yourself, I mean in the sense that any sort of connection that you thought you had to your emotions and yourself kind of gets like jumbled up and people will constantly tell you that you're not acting like yourself but you don't notice where anything is different so then you just feel this huge disconnect from a lot of your support system and for me my support system primarily as far as like my coping mechanisms in life had been performing I started acting when I was six years old because when I was three I decided I was going to tell my parents that I wanted to participate in Model Search America and um, needless to say um, it, it didn't it didn't go over very well at first but my mom had been a model so being the feisty child that I was um, I managed to uh, to really get at her and be like yo mom you can't, you can't tell me that I can't model because you were a model. And so you can't say I can't do something that you would do. And she was like, God damn it, and this old bitch is right. And she's calling me out for being a hypocrite, which is like really advanced at this age. So I'm going uh, to take some time and I'm going to consider this. Um, I didn't end up going to Model Search America until I was like five. Um, and I didn't end up going to, you know, do the callbacks till I was six. It was one of my mom's conditions. She was a very responsible, very protective parent. Um, and so the first job that I ended up going um, to audition for with my new agency in Toronto, which at the time was the children's division of um, Sutherland's, so camera kids, um, it was for Payless Shoes. And so I don't know how many of you are old enough or even cared enough about shoes at this point in time um, in your lives to remember that like in, I would say around 2000, um, there was an ad with, uh, it was a Christmas ad, and it was a whole bunch of people celebrating the holidays. Um, and obviously this was a Payless Shoes ad. And there was a little mixed girl who was dancing on her dad's feet. I was that little mixed girl. Now, this was the first commercial slash audition I had ever gone on, and I actually landed the job, which meant that my initial thoughts of being a model completely 180 degrees swung in the other way, and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna become an actress because this is the most amazing shit I have ever experienced. Keep in mind, I am six years old at this point in time, um, and not only have I not ever been able to stay up past midnight, and because the commercial was filming in an actual Payless Shoes, we didn't start filming till like 10.30 at night, um, but in addition to staying up all night and getting to run around in a closed shoe store, um, which is pretty much every little girl's dream. Uh, I then got put up in um, my first five-star hotel um, by the production company. They put me up in Yorkville, which if you've been to Toronto, you will know is like our bougie ass, like part of town um, where like all of the celebrities hang out and all of the most fancy expensive clothes can be found. Well, at six years old, I had no concept of what Yorkville was. And I just 
arrived there really tired at night and for the first time valets came took my mom's car took our luggage brought us up to our room it was a whole experience um and I was actually allowed to jump on the bed because for the first time it was my room it wasn't like I was staying in my parents house and I was staying in my parents room like literally this was my hotel room and it was the coolest fucking thing ever so naturally your girl jumped on the beds uh and she she jumped herself to like complete tiredom. Um, I remember falling asleep that night and being like, this is the coolest thing ever. For the rest of my life, this is all I'm ever gonna wanna do. And so getting to the point where I was now an adult, I was 18, 19, 20, living on my own in downtown Toronto in a place where I should have been able to completely take advantage of the casting opportunities, the networking opportunities that were being presented to me, I now felt insecure and out of place in my own body. For the first time in my life, I did not feel like I had a clear path or a clear passion. And that drove me crazy. So I did something really, really dumb, guys. Um, honestly, like, just word of advice, whether you are younger than me, whether you are older than me, it does not fucking matter, okay? Every person's journey in life is different and you're gonna learn lessons at different times, but like, be yourself. I cannot stress this enough. If there's something that you love and you know that you love it, never ever let anyone or yourself convince you to stop doing it because you will ultimately regret it. Now, now that that serious note is done, um, yeah, I decided I was going to try and be normal because uh, growing up in a really small town in Canada, um, being pretty much the only person out of my peer group who was involved in the entertainment industry, especially to the extent that I was involved, um, I did not have a lot of friends growing up. You would be surprised to hear this, but I was not a very popular kid. So um, I typically treated my performing like it was the most important thing that I could possibly do. And as I mentioned before, my mom was very, very productive. And I mean like protective. Most of y'all probably don't know my mom's name. Um, I'll probably introduce her on my channel at some point in time. Her name is Diane. And uh, the running joke when I was a kid was actually that she was my guardian on set because she was guard Diane. Um, so like, she was a pretty intense stage mama and not because she was out there trying to like get me to work extra or like you know pimp me out but because like she was like my child's not gonna go on set unless she has a solid a average like i'm not I'm not having her show up if she doesn't have good grades like it's, it's cute but um her ass could stay home. So I had to maintain really good grades in school, which meant that um, extracurriculars were a choice of, do you want to act or do you want to try and fit in with the other kids? And being an only child, not really having like any sibling pressure, I chose to act and not fit in with the other kids, which don't get me wrong, like it's not a bad choice. I'm not upset about it overall. I think I've lived a pretty amazing life. Um, are there things that I would ultimately change about it I guess if I could go back in a time machine sure there are mistakes that I would wish I did not make do I think that even if I had a time machine and I went back and I found myself and I was like yo bitch I was about to make a huge mistake you should probably stop right now that little bitch would be like oh my god are you me from the future giving me some sage advice let me just take that right now no no I, I I'm almost positive I would not take even future me's advice so i'm not even sure why i'm trying to give you all advice but hopefully you're smarter than future me okay or past me or whatever iteration of me we're talking about in this hypothetical situation that would not listen to me. okay so just an update on how little i know about youtube and how new this is to me i just tried to upload a video that was 30 minutes long and got told that i had to cut it in half so um this is going to be, you know, to be continued, and you're going to have to watch the second video to figure out exactly what the hell happened. Sorry about that. My apologies. Stay tuned.